Okay, in this tutorial we'll be looking at animation again. Uh, this time we'll be looking at a different package, a package called Synfig Studio. Now Synfig Studio is a pretty heavyweight animation package and we could probably spend a week or two going through all the various facilities of it. But what we'll be aiming to do in this particular tutorial is to take you through one single method of doing an animation and that's called a cutout animation in Synfig. And what that entails is creating all your original images in a graphics package such as GIMP and then exporting them from that package and importing them in into Synfig, stitching them all together into a workable model and then using that to create the actual two-dimensional animation. Um, first thing to note on our Linceum site here, if you click down on our desktop guide and I think it's under animation, so if we just expand animation here you can see we've got a number of animation topics down here quite a few of them on Synfig Studio so if you want to know how to uh, install it for instance how to run it what all the windows are etc and all the ins and outs of using Synfig Studio then Linuseum is the place to go okay let's get started uh, what I'll do is I'll open up our base image and if you've seen our tutorial on doing animation with GIMP you'll be familiar with this gentleman here so this is our example image as you can see what we've done is take all the movable parts and put them out onto separate layers so each body part that we want to animate is actually sat on a completely different layer of the image and what we would do before we import this to Synfig is to save each of these layers off as a separate PNG file so you end up with each of these layers in a different file. If we quit this, should be able to see that now. If we click down into this directory, we can see that we've got a file for the background, the head, left arm, left lower leg, etc. etc. So these are all the files that have been created in GIMP. We just need to pull those into Synfig Studio. So what I'm going to do is just pull that up now. And again, if you haven't got Synfig Studio installed you can follow the instructions on the Linuseum to do so. So first thing you notice is that Synfig is one of the few applications that makes the number of windows in GIMP look small. Let's take a quick tour of each of them. This one over on the left is called the Toolbox that has mainly the drawing tools plus access to some of the file functions up here, some shortcuts. You don't tend to need this window unless you're actually uh, creating your images directly in Synfig. As we're importing them, we won't actually be using that window much at all. Um, this central window is the main one. It's called Canvas. This is where your image will be displayed and there are various options along the top and a timeline along the bottom for your animation. So you can see this is in frames, that's the F, and the S shows seconds, so that's naught frames at that point, and two seconds at this, and four seconds. So I think Synfig by default will create a five second animation, but you can obviously change that to whatever time you like. This window over on the right has multiple functions with lots of different tabs and various things. The main thing we'll be using is this display down here. It's called the Layers Palette. It's a looks and functions similar to the Layers Palette in GIMP or Photoshop. As we import each file in here, we will see it come in as a separate layer down here. And finally, this window at the bottom has multiple uses again. The two main uses we'll be using are this particular tab here, which is the params view. So when we've got a layer selected here, we'll see the parameters for that layer and be able to manipulate them. Uh, the second thing we're going to be using in this window is this little key icon, and that lists the keyframes. And we'll be coming to keyframes a little bit later on when we're actually doing the final animation. OK, so those are the windows. What we're going to do now is just set up the system ready to import stuff in. So I'm going to use Edit Properties, first of all, and I'm going to set the size of the canvas that we're going to use. And I think from memory it's about well, 500 by 500, the GIMP image that we're using. 
OK, so I'll just hit OK. And that will set the canvas size to 500 by 500. And let's import the image here. So I'm going to do a file import and just pull in the first one. Let's just take head, double click on it. Now the first thing you'll notice is the head doesn't seem to display in this window. Now sometimes you'll find that Synfig uh, and GIMP don't agree on how big 500 pixels are so you have to go in and mess about with this value called image span. Um, typically when I've been doing animations the value tends to be sort of 20 to 30 ish area so I'm going to do I'm going to try 30 and do an apply and see if that comes in. Ah, there you go. There's a chap's head. So that's come in. But you can see that the frame of the image is still slightly bigger than the uh, than the canvas area. So let's just increase that image span up to, yeah, 35. Let's try that. Haha, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's done it now. So that seems to fit nicely. So that's our first layer. And as you can see down here in the layers, palette over here we can see the head dot ping listed. What I'm going to do now is put in the next layer down here, import ok let's go for left arm so we've now pulled in the left arm layer and we can see it's come in as a separate layer down here in the layer palette so we'll carry on doing that and um, you can join us once we've pulled in all our layers. Ok so now I've imported all the images into Synfig we can see that we have a slight problem here in that my background is totally obscuring my picture the man and this is because the background is higher up the layer stack than the rest of the images and so it is absolutely obscuring all the detail so we need to pull this down to be lower in the stack so that the other images sit on top of it okay we've got some other issues here in that the trunk the man seems to be obscuring the right arm so again we're going to move the trunk down trunk is probably going to be just down there over the head there we go and we can see now that's looking much better I can see his arm I can see his head I can see both legs so that looks fine so we've got a correct order now in the layers palette Okay, so you probably noticed that when we imported all the separate files, all the parts came in in the correct position in relation to each other, i.e. the correct starting position for the animation. And uh, and this was no coincidence, that's the way we actually saved it off. Okay, and this is just because it's easier to do it in GIMP rather than to try and move all the separate parts around in Synfig. Now, obviously, if we start to move any one of these layers here, if I was to click on one layer here like the left shoe and then I pull the left shoe away um, it'll actually just break away from the body so what we need to do is to lock all the parts together that form the whole of the body so we can't actually pull it apart by accident so the way we do that is that we select all the layers that we want to link together uh, in this case it is everything bar the background so I'm just going to click on the first layer and shift click on the head layer that will select everything between those two points and if we come across here in the properties windows you can see here we've got two properties these layers all have in common top left and bottom right so what we want to do is to link those two coordinates together so all I do is right click on it and choose link and you can see there's a little chain link icon that comes up next to that property to say that it's linked and I do the same with the bottom right and there we go so hopefully now we can't pull one of these things away from the rest of the body by accident okay so now we've got those components linked we need to start um, applying transformations to move our image now a transformation in Synfig is applied to what's known as an encapsulation layer so everything within that encapsulation layer will be affected by that transformation so the first thing we need to do is to put each of these layers that we want to move separately into its own encapsulation layer and we do that by just right clicking over the layer and then choosing the option encapsulate okay and it the new encapsulation layer is created 
with the default name of inline canvas but if you just click in that area you can give it a more meaningful name I can't remember which component this was if I click it out it's a right upper leg okay so let's just call that right upper leg to avoid confusion later on hit return and there we have an encapsulation layer containing that single image of the right upper leg and if I click that off you can see that where that is that's the right upper leg there and if I take the whole of that layer off you can see it does exactly the same thing so at the moment that's not particularly useful but if we want to apply a transformation now to this particular part of the image what we do is we click on the image and we do another right click but this time we choose the new layer transform and we choose the particular transformation that we want to actually um, occur in this case it's going to be a rotate layer okay again we can rename that to something more useful rotate oh, let's call it right upper leg because we've got a left upper leg as well okay so that's created a single rotation that will apply to all elements within this particular encapsulation layer in this case it's just going to be this because we have only got the rotation layer and this image within that particular encapsulation if I click on the rotate layer and we look across on the canvas here you can see these two circles that have popped up on the screen they're called ducks in Synfig and what these are these are handles which allow you to apply the transformation to your image so the green one is the actual center of rotation but what we do is we drag that one up to the point around which we want the rotation to occur so that's going to be his hip um, which is probably going to be around there now this blue duck now when we actually click drag this this will change the angle of rotation around that point so you can see it's rotating that part of the image around this green point that we defined here and obviously if we change this point it will rotate around somewhere completely different so so there we have a single rotation and, and as you can see that rotation only applies to that layer of the image okay so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go down and create an encapsulation and a rotate layer for each of these parts of the image and um, you can join me once I've completed it.